Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Snowflake Summit 22, live from Caesars Forum in Las Vegas. I'm Lisa Martin, my co-host Dave Vellante. We've been here the last day and a half unpacking a lot of news, a lot of announcements, talking with customers and partners. We have another great session coming for you next. We've got a customer and a partner talking tech and data mesh. Please welcome Mitesh Shah, the VP of Market Strategy at Alation. Great to be and here. And Ash Nasir, great to have you. Senior Director of Data Engineering at Warner Brothers Discovery. Welcome, guys. Thank you for having me. It's great to be back in person and to be able to really get to see and feel and touch this technology, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, two years or so, yeah. Great to feel the energy in the conference center. Yeah. Snowflake was virtual, I think, for two years, and yeah. now it's great to kind of see the excitement firsthand, so it's wonderful. The excitement, but also the boom in, in the number of customers and partners and people attending. They were saying the first, or the summit in 2019 had about 1,900 attendees, and this is around 10,000. So a huge jump in a short time period. Talk a little bit about the Alation Snowflake partnership and probably some of the acceleration that you guys have been experiencing as a Snowflake partner. Yeah, as a Snowflake partner, I mean, Snowflake is a, an investor of us uh, in Alation um, early last year, and we've been a, a partner for, for longer than that. And uh, good news, we uh, have been awarded Snowflake Partner of the Year for Data Governance uh, just earlier this week, and that's, in fact, our, our second year in a row for, for winning that award. So, great news on that front as repeat. well. Repeat, yeah. congratulations. Repeat, actually, absolutely, and we're going to hope, hope to make it a three-peat as well. Um, and we've also been awarded uh, industry competency badges in five different industries, those being financial services, uh, healthcare, retail technology, and uh, media and telco. Excellent. Okay. All right. Got to right, get into it. Data mesh. You guys actually have a data mesh and you presented at the conference. So take us back to the beginning. Why did you decide that you needed to implement something like Data Mesh. What was the impetus? Yeah, so when people think of Warner Brothers, you always think of like the movie studio, but we're more than that, right? I mean, you think of HBO, you think of TNT, you think of CNN. We have 30 plus brands in our portfolio and each have their own needs. So the the idea of a data mesh really helps us because what we can do is we can federate access across the company so that you know CNN can work at their own pace. You know when there's election season, they can ingest their own data and they don't have to you know bump up against, as an example, HBO if Game of Thrones is going on. So okay, so the the impetus was to serve those lines of business better. Actually given that you've got these different brands, it was probably easier than most companies, because if you're, let's say you're a big financial services company, and you got, now you have to decide who owns what. what it, CNN owns its own data products. HBO, now, how, now do they decide within the, 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 those different brands how to distribute even further, or is it really, how, how deep have you gone in that decentralization? That's a great question. Um, it's it's a, part, a very close partnership, because there are, a number of data sets which, which are um, used by all the brands, right? You think about people browsing websites, right? Um, you know, CNN has a website, Warner Brothers has a website. Like, so for us to ingest that data, for each of the brands to ingest that data separately, that means five different ways of doing things and um, you know, um, a, um, a big environment, right? So that is where um, our team comes into play. We, ing we ingest a lot of the uh, common data sets, um, but like I said, any unique data sets, um, data sets re regarding theatrical as an example. Um, you know, Warner Brothers does, does it themselves, you know, for streaming, um, HBO Max does it themselves. So we kind of operate in partnership. So do you have a, 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 a centralized data team and also decentralized data teams, right? That's right, that, yeah. So I love this conversation because that was heresy uh, 10 years ago, five years ago even, because that's inefficient. But, but, but you've, I presume you've found that it's actually more productive in terms of the business output. But explain it, that dynamic. You know, you bring up such a good point. So I, you know, uh, I consider myself as one of the dinosaurs who started like 20 plus years ago in this industry. And back then we were all taught to think of the data warehouse as like a monolithic thing. And the reason for that is the technology wasn't there. The technology didn't catch up. Now, 20 years later, the technology is way ahead, right? Uh, but like our mindset's still the same because we think of data warehouse 
warehouses and data platforms still as a monolithic thing. But if you really sort of remove that sort of mental barrier, if you will, and if you start thinking about, well, how do I sort of um, you know, federate everything and make sure that you let folks who are building, who are closest to the customer, who are building their products, let them own that data and have a partnership, the results have been amazing, and if we were only sort of doing it as a centralized team, we would not be able to do a tenth of what we do today. So it's that massive scale wow. in, in our company as well. And I should have clarified, when we talk about data mesh, are we talking about the, the implementing, in practice, Jamak Degani sort of framework, or is this sort of your own sort of terminology? Uh, well, so the interesting part is four years ago we didn't have... It didn't uh, exist. Yeah, it didn't right. exist, right? <laughs> um, and, and so we, our, our principle were, was very simple, right? When we started out, we said, um, we want to make sure that our brands are able to uh, operate independently with some oversight and guidance from our technology teams, right? That's what we set out to do. We did that with Snowflake by design because Snowflake allows us to you know, separate those, uh, those brands into different accounts. So that was done by design, and then the, the magic, I think, uh, is the Snowflake data sharing, where, which allows us to sort of bring data in here once, and then share it with wh whoever needs it. So think about HBO Max. On HBO Max, you not only have HBO Max content, but content from CNN, from Cartoon Network, um, from Warner Brothers, right? All the movies, right? So to see how the Batman movie did in theaters and then on streaming, you don't need, you know, Warner Brothers doesn't need to ingest the same streaming data. HBO, HBO Max does it, HBO Max shares it with Warner Brothers, you know, store once, share many times, and everyone works at their own pace. So they're building data products, those data products are discoverable, APIs, I presume, or I guess maybe just, I guess the Snowflake cloud, but very importantly, they're governed. And that's correct where Alation comes in? That's uh, precisely where Alation comes in, is we're sort of a, this central, uh, flexible foundation for data governance. You know, you mentioned data mesh. I think it's, what's interesting is that it's really an answer to the bottlenecks created by centralized IT, right? There's this notion of decentralizing that the, the, the data engineers and making the data domain owners, the people that know the data the best, have them be in control of publishing the data to the data consumers. There are other popular concepts actually happening right now as we speak around modern data stack, around data fabric that are also in many ways underpinned by this notion of decentralization, right? These are, these are concepts that are underpinned by decentralization, and, and as the pendulum swings sort of between decentralization and centralization, as we go back and forth in the world of IT and data, there are certain constants that need to be centralized over time, and one of those, I believe, is very much a centralized platform for data governance, and that's certainly, I think, where we come in. We'd love to hear more about how you use, uh, how you use Alation. Yeah, so, I mean, Alation helps us sort of, as you guys say, sort of that map of the, of the, the treasure map of the data, right? Um, so for consumers to find where their data is, that's where Alation helps us. It helps us with the data cataloging, you know, storing all the metadata, and you know, users can go in, they can sort of find um, you know, the data that they need and they can also find how others are using data. So it's, there's a little bit of a crowdsourcing aspect that Alation helps us to do uh, whereby you, know, you can see, okay, my, my peer in the other group, well that's how they use this piece of data. So I, I'm not going to spend hours trying to figure this out. I'm actually going to use the query that they use, so yeah. So you have a master catalog, I presume, and then each of the brands has their own sub-catalogs, is that correct? Well, uh, for the most part, we, uh, we have that master catalog and then the brands sort of use it um, you know, uh, separately themselves. The key here is, all that catalog, uh, that catalog isn't maintained by a centralized group as well, right? It's again maintained by uh, the individual teams, and not in the, only in uh, the individual teams, but the folks that are responsible for the data, right? So I talked about the concept of crowdsourcing. Whoever sort of puts the data in, has to make sure that they update the catalog and make sure that the definitions are there and um, everything's sort of in line. So HBO, CNN, they each have their own sort of access to their catalog, but they feed into the master catalog. Is that the right way to think yeah. about it? Okay, and, and, and they have their own virtual data warehouses, right? They, they have ownership over that. They can spin them up, spin them down as they see fit, right? And they're governed. They're governed. 
And what's interesting is it's not just governed, right? Governance is a, is a big word, it's, it's a bit nebulous, but what's really being enabled here is this notion of self-service as well. Right? There's two big sort of rockets that need to happen at the same time in any given organization. There's this notion that you want to put trustworthy data in the hands of data consumers while at the same time mitigating risk and that's precisely what Alation does. So I want to I clarify this for, for the audience. So there's four principles of database. This came after you guys did it and I wonder how it, 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 it aligns. Uh, domain ownership, give mm -hmm. data as you were saying to the, to the domain owners who have context. Data as product, you guys are building data products and that creates two problems. How do you give people self-service infrastructure and how do you automate governance. So the first two, great, but then it creates these other problems. Is that aligned with your philosophy? Where's, where's alignment, what's different? Yeah, the data products is exactly where we're going, and that, that sort of the domain-based design, uh, that's really key as well. In our business, you think about who the customer is, as an example, right? Depending on who you ask is going to be, the answer might be different. Uh, you know, to the, uh, the movie, uh, to the movie business, it's probably going to be the person who watches a movie in a theater. To the streaming business, to HBO Max, it's the streamer, right? To others, it's you know someone watching live CNN on their TV, right? Um, it, there's yet another group. Think about all the franchising we do. So you see Batman action figures and T-shirts and you know Warner Brothers uh, branded stuff in. Store Stores, that's yet another business unit. But at the end of the day, it's it's we're not it's not a different person, it's you and me, right? We we do all these things. So the domain concept, make sure that you ingest data and you bring data relevant to the context. However, not sort of making it so stringent where it cannot integrate, and then you integrate it uh, at a higher level to create that 360. And it's discoverable, so the point is I, I, I don't have to go tap Ash on the shoulder and say, how do I get this data? Is it governed? Is it? Do I have access to it? Give me the rules of, it just, I go grab it, right? Uh -huh. And the system computationally oh. automates yeah. whether or not I have access to it, and it's, as you say, self-service. In this case, exactly right. It enables people to just search for data and know that when they find the data, whether it's trustworthy or not, through trust flags and the like, so it's doing both of those things at the same time. How is it an enabler of solving some of the big challenges that the media and the entertainment industry is going through? We've seen so much change the last couple of years. The, the rising consumer expectations aren't going to go back down. They're only going to come up. We want you to serve us up content that's relevant, that's personalized, that makes sense. I'd love to understand from your perspective, Mitesh, from, a, from an industry challenges perspective, how does this technology help customers like Warner Brothers Discovery meet business customers where they are and reduce the volume on those challenges? It's a, it's a great question and as I mentioned earlier, we had uh, five industry competency badges that were awarded to us by, by Snowflake and one of those four media and telco. And the reason for that is we're helping media companies understand their audiences better and ultimately serve up better experiences uh, for, for their audiences. But we've got Ash right here that can tell us how that's happening in practice. Yeah, tell us. Uh, so I'll, I'll share a story. I always like to tell stories, right? Once, a, once upon a time before we had Alation in place, it was like who you knew was how you got access to the data. So if I knew you and I knew you yeah, had yeah, yeah. access to a certain yeah. kind of data, that, you know, and, and it was, you know, your access to the right kind of data was based on the network you had at the company. I had to is, trust you. Yeah. I might not want to give up my data. That's <laughs> it, that, that's it. Um, and so that, that's where relation sort of helps us democratize it. But, you know, puts the governance and controls, right? There are certain sensitive things as well, such as viewership, such as subscriber counts, which are very important. So making sure that the right people have access to it, that's the other problem that Alation helps us solve. That's uh, precisely part of our integration with Snowflake in particular, being able to define and manage policies within Alation saying you know, certain people should have access to certain rows, doing column level masking, and having those policies actually enforced at the Snowflake data layer is, is precisely part of our value proposition. And that's automated. And all that's automated, exactly. Right, so I don't have to think about it, I don't have to go through the tap on their shoulder. What has been the impact, Ash, on data quality as you've pushed it down into the domains? That's a great question. Um, 
so it has definitely um, improved. Um, but there, you know, so data quality is a very interesting subject because uh, back to my example of, you know, when we started doing things, we, you know, the centralized IT team always said, well, it has to be like this, right? And if it doesn't fit in this, then it's it's bad quality. Well, sometimes context change, businesses change, right? You have to be able to react to it quickly. So making sure that a lot of that quality is managed at the decentralized level, at the place where you have that business context, that, that ensures you have have the, the most up-to-date quality. We're talking about media industry changing so quickly, right? I mean, would we have thought three years ago that people would watch a lot of these major movies on streaming services? I mean, you know, and but here's the reality, right? But, you know, so you, you have to react and, you know, having it at that level just helps you react faster. So, data, if I play that back, data quality is not a static framework. It's, it's flexible based on the business context, and the business owners can make those adjustments because they own the data. That's right? it, that's exactly uh, it. That's awesome, wow, that's amazing progress that you guys have made. Um, and quality, if I could just add, it also just changes uh, depending on yeah. where you are in your data pipeline stage, right? Data quality, data observability, this is a very fast evolving space at the moment, and if I look to my left right now, I bet you I can probably see a half dozen quality observ observability vendors right now. And so given that, and given the fact that Alation still is sort of a central hub to find trustworthy data, we've actually announced an open data quality initiative allowing for best of breed data quality vendors to integrate with the platform. So whoever they are, whatever tool folks want to use, they can use that particular tool of choice. And this all runs in the cloud, or is it a hybrid sort of? Everything is in the cloud. We are, uh, we are all in, in the cloud, and um, you know, again, helps us go faster. Let me ask you a question. The, one of the, I could go on forever on this topic, one of the, one of the concepts that Jamak Dagani put forth is whether it's a, a Snowflake data warehouse or a Databricks data lake or an Oracle data warehouse, they should all be, it should be inclusive. They should just be a node on the mesh. I'm like, wow, that sounds good, but uh, I haven't seen it yet, all right? I'm, I'm guessing that Snowflake and Alation enable all the self-serve, all this automated governance, and that including those other items is got to be a one-off at this point in time. Do you ever see you expanding that scope or is it better off to just kind of leave it into the, the Snowflake data cloud? It's a good question. Um, you know, I feel like where we're at today, especially in terms of sort of technology, giving us so many uh, options, I don't think there's a one size fits all, mm -hmm. right? Even though we are very heavily invested in Snowflake and we use Snowflake consistently across the organization, but you could theoretically, you could have a architecture that blends those two, right? Have different types of data platforms like a Teradata or an Oracle um, and sort of bring it all together. Today we have the technology, um, you know that, and all sorts of things that can sort of make sure that you you query uh, on on different databases. So I don't think the technology is is the problem. I think is the is the organizational mindset. I think that that's what gets in the way. Oh, interesting. So I was going to ask you, will hybrid tables help you solve that problem? And it, it, and maybe not. What you're saying it's the it's the organization that owns the Oracle database saying, hey, we have our system. It processes. It works. You know, go away. Yeah, right. well, you know, hybrid tables, I think, is is a great sort of next step in Snowflake's yeah. evolution. I think it's, in my opinion, I, I think it's a game changer. Um, but yeah, I mean, they can still exist. You could do hybrid tables right on Snowflake, or you could, you know, you could kind of coexist uh, as well. Yeah. But do you have a thought on this? Yeah, I do. I mean, we're, we're always going to live in a time where you've got data distributed in throughout the organization uh, and around the globe. And that could be, even if you're all in on Snowflake, you could have data in Snowflake here, you could have data in Snowflake in EMEA, in Europe somewhere, it could be anywhere. By the same token, you might be using, every organization is using on-premises systems. They have data, they naturally have data everywhere, and so, you know, this one solution to this is really centralizing, as I mentioned, not just governance, but also metadata about all of the data in your organization so that you can enable people to search and find and discover trustworthy data no matter where it is in your organization. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, if you have the, the data about the data, then you can, you can treat these independent nodes as just that, right? Exactly. And, uh, and maybe there's some advantages of putting it all in the Snowflake cloud, but to your point, it, organizationally, that's just not feasible. The whole, unfortunately, sorry Snowflake, all the world's data is not going to go into Snowflake, but they <laughs> play a key role in accelerating what I'm hearing. 
your vision of data mesh. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think going forward in the future, uh, we have to start thinking about data platforms as just one place where you sort of dump all the data. It, it, and that's where the mesh concept comes in. It is going to be a mesh. It's going to be distributed. And organizations have to be okay with that. And they have to embrace the tools. I mean, you know, Facebook developed a tool called Presto many, many yeah, years ago that, that helps them solve exactly the same problem. So I think the technology is there. I think, I think the organizational mindset needs to evolve. Yeah, definitely. Culture. Culture is one of the hardest yeah. things to change. Exactly. Guys, this was a master class in data mesh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course, what Alation is doing with Snowflake and with Warner Brothers Discovery. Keep that content coming. I got a lot of stuff I got to catch up on watching. Sounds good. Thank you for having <laughs> Thanks, us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, you guys. For Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Snowflake Summit 22. We'll be back after a short break. <laughs>